Hello, everyone. Today, Shangqian and I will give an introduction to the data protection work group in Kubernetes. My name is Xinyang. I work at VMware in the cloud storage team. I'm a co-chair of Kubernetes Six Storage. I also co-lead the data protection work group with Shangqian. Hello, this is Shangqian. I'm a software engineer from Google. I work with the Shin within this working group. So here's today's agenda. First, we will talk about uh, why we are forming this data protection work group, uh, who are involved. We will talk about the charter, the data protection definition, what are the existing building blocks in Kubernetes, and what are still missing what we have been working on. And finally, we'll talk about how to get involved. In, um, in Kubernetes, the stateful applications use persistent volumes to store their data. Um, and uh, a persistent volume has an independent life cycle from the pod that is consuming it so that data can be preserved under an underlying storage system, even if the pod goes away. Uh, however, what if the, what if the underlying storage system is uh, stricken by a disaster? What if the volume on the storage system gets corrupted for some reason? When that happens, even data stored on the persistent volumes will be gone. So to prevent data loss from happening, we need to find a way to protect the data stored in the persistent volumes used by the, uh, the Kubernetes stateful applications. Although how to provision persistent volumes is well known, it is still a challenge to protect your workloads in Kubernetes. This is a problem that this data protection work group wants to solve. Uh, in Kubernetes, Volume Snapshot was introduced as an alpha feature in 1.12 and was promoted to beta in 1.17 release. This allows us to backup and restore a volume based on the volume snapshots. However, many things are still missing. At KubeCon in San Diego at the end of last year, uh, there were several sessions in storage track talking about data protection in Kubernetes. We also had a meeting with several backup vendors talking about what are needed in Kubernetes to do data protection. We reached a consensus that a dedicated work group should be formed to focus on this area. We got support from Sikh Sword Chair Saad Ali and Sikh Apps Chair Adnan. We sent out an email in Kubernetes dev mailing list and got overwhelming responses. So we formally submitted this PR is shown here to form this working group. It was approved by the steering committee in January, so the group was formally established. We have been holding bi-weekly meetings since then. Uh, as shown on this slide, there are many companies uh, have been supporting this working group. And this is the charter of the data protection work group. We have this listed on our working group's community page. This working group is formed so that we can have a cross sig collaboration to figure out what are the missing functionalities and work together to design features in order to support data protection in Kubernetes. Sponsoring six for this working group are Seek apps and seek storage. Next, Shan Chen is going to talk about data protection definition. Thank you, He Xin. In the following 10 to 15 minutes, I walk you through the definition of data protection in this working group and what are the problems we are looking to solve in this working group. What are the Kubernetes native constructs we are, this working group is exploring or designing, et cetera, et cetera. 
Data protection in the industry can either refer to protecting data from compromise and ensure data privacy, or from time to time, it also refers to ensuring that data and that application are prote protected such that they could be quickly restored and recovered into any previously saved state whenever there's a data loss or corruption happens. In this working group, we focus on the latter in the Kubernetes environment. There are two major processes in data protection, backup and recovery. The backup process produces durable backups of a system. In many cases, backup processes are scheduled to comply with certain org policies. For example, an organization might want to enforce weekly backup of all its production database for business continuity reasons. And the recovery process takes a backup and restore resources in it. Particular, uh, it can be partially restoration or can be full restoration. It can be restored into a new system or it can be restored into the system from where uh, from, from which this backup is taken from. And like a backup process, the restore process happens in an ad hoc manner from time to time. For example, only when there's data corruption or loss of data center in a, in a disaster. In Kubernetes context, there are two types of entities in consideration when we're talking about backup and recovery, API resources, and the persistent volume data. There are many efforts to make Kubernetes more available and resilient. For example, we introduced the redundancy mechanism for XCD, and there are products like Flux, which is built on top of GitOps uh, concept. The idea is to use Git as the source of truth of desired de declarative states. Most of the time, there are those will be your YAML files, uh, define your workload. However, there are still open questions to be answered. For example, how to coordinate an application consistent snapshot backup in Kubernetes environment? How to snapshot backup volume data? Tools like Veloro, Casting are designed to partially solve those problems. A community wide standard, however, is still yet to be developed. And that's one of the goals of the data protection working group. Us as a group, we consider data protection in Kubernetes a very complicated and layered problem. Kubernetes native building blocks are needed in the persistent volume layer, the application level, and the cluster level. One of the major missions of this working group is to identify existing or missing building blocks to achieve backup recovery in different layers. At a persistent volume level, we need building blocks to support volume snapshot, volume backup, and the restoration from snapshot backup. Snapshot is already a beta feature supported by many CSI drivers in Kubernetes since 1.17. Recreating a PVC from a volume snapshot has been released as part of the feature. Compared to volume backup, traditionally, volume snapshot is in general relatively cheap and fast, as it, is, as it normally sits on the same storage media as the source volume. However, many cloud providers implement it indifferently in today's Kubernetes CSI drivers. I'll go a little bit deeper later on. At the application level, we need to build in blocks to, first of all, group API resources, which belongs to an application. That basically defines all the API resources that constructs this particular application. We also need quires and unquires hooks, which can tell a specific application to temporarily freeze itself to achieve, uh, to achieve application consistency snapshot and backup and unfreeze itself afterwards. This is particularly important for those applications which caches writes in RAM. A quiet hook allows them to flush writes to the persistent layer 
before a volume snapshot is taken. Of course, on top of that, we do need for stateful workloads, we do need volume snapshots and volume backup. Lastly, at cluster level, we need all of this above. So we've talked about what we need, what do we have today. In the persistent volume level, volume snapshot is already bad as mentioned. I'll try to cover more details in the following slides, the plan to move this feature to GA in the latter version. In the application level, they are rich fundamental workload APIs, such as stateful set, replica set, deployment, etc. Based on those fundamental workload APIs, SIG apps introduced an application CRD, which targets at providing a standard API for creating, within, and then manage applications in Kubernetes from higher level. Application CRD groups different components together into a single object such that they can be managed together. And this is something can tell in the data protection context as what are the resources that constructs an, uh, constructs an application. As many modern application workloads, uh, it is not sufficient to represent it using just a simple deployment. On top of that, you from time to time also need a service. If you take a look at, at the definition of the application CRD, it is defined by a group of uh, group kinds, as well as a selecting labels, which selects the resources of those corresponding group kinds to construct the application. A look at the, in the middle, the application can basically theoretically take any group kinds of existing Kubernetes constructs, state for say deployment service, et cetera. On the right-hand side, there's an example, which is a typical MongoDB. Uh, you can take a look at the component kind section. There's a service which exposes Mongo interfaces to external kinds. And there's also an application, which is a kind of a stateful set, which hosts the real workload for this MongoDB. Application CRD gives a potential way of data production working group can use to define an application and group the API resources that belongs to the application for snapshot and backup. Moving on to volume snapshot. We have, it has been a beta feature. However, there are still gaps needed to be filled to move it to GA. One of the things the community is working on is to provide richer metric support uh, and observability around the volume snapshot controllers. And the other thing is because the volume snapshot utilized a very similar way of PVPVC that conducts bidirectional binding. It is from time to time prone to error for users to mutate some of those fields and uh, cause the bounding lost. In the before we bring the feature to GA, we'd like to introduce webhooks and validation such that a volume snapshot and a volume snapshot content CR cannot be easily modified to violate some bi bidirectional bindings. And we're also looking to extend all the ex existing end-to-end -end tests in the Kubernetes environment uh, as part of the Kubernetes CI jobs so that we have more confidence on this feature. And one of the things I want to mention a little bit more is a stress testing. Because volume snapshot as a fundamental building block for application level snapshot and application level backup, it is very critical to make sure the runtime of making a volume snapshot as short as possible. Because applications will need to freeze themselves so that they are not taking any writes or flashing all the data into the persistent layer. We don't want that period to be long. So having stress testing around this feature allows the, it gives us more confidence on the controller level that we can do this thing efficiently. 
upcoming index, what are, we talk about what we have. So there's a lot more what we are missing. So we are still missing volume backup functionalities in the Kubernetes environment. Uh, we still are missing backup repositories. This is more about uh, storing backups into a different storage media than the, your primary storage, uh, such that in cases like a disaster recovery, uh, where you don't have your data center or your cluster around, you still have a backup seat somewhere, maybe in the cloud or maybe in somewhere place, some other data center that can restore your original data center into a next into a different place. Uh, we are missing quiz and unquiz hooks and application snap application level snapshot and backup. Uh, next, Xin is going to walk you through all the working items in this working group. Thanks. Thanks, Chen. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what we have been working on. As shown on this slide, we have been working on the design of many new features. The first one is the generic data populator. This allows the PVC to be provisioned for an external data source, not just a volume snapshot or another existing PVC, but it could be an object store, a GitHub repo, or an image, or something else. This is very important in the backup and resource path. It allows us to dynamically provision a PVC based on a storage class, create an underlying volume, and allow data on that volume to be restored from someplace else, such as a backup repository, create a PV to point to that volume, and then let Kubernetes PV controller to bind that PV and PVC. This makes it possible to honor the wait for first consumer volume binding mode during the restore to ensure volume is placed at the right node while the pod is created. There's already an any volume data source feature gate, which was introduced as an alpha feature in 1.18 release. We want to have a generic data popular implementation so that we can promote this feature to beta in 1.20. The next one is quiz on quiz hooks. This is to figure out how to quiz an application before taking a snapshot and on quiz afterwards to achieve application consistency. We initially proposed to introduce a execution hook CRD for dynamically executing users' commands in a pod container and a execution hook controller to manage the hook's lifecycle. Execution hook provides a generic mechanism for users to trigger hook commands in their containers. Uh, this proposes two new CRDs. One is a uh, hook action CRD that describes action commands to run on pod containers, and an execution hook CRD which describes where in which part container to run a specific hook action. However, because this requires an external controller to run a command through pod exact sub resource to do the quiz, it raises uh, security concerns from the API reviewers. So now we are actually looking at a different approach. Also, uh, in addition to quiz on quiz an application, there are other use cases that require the user to send a signal to the pod to trigger certain commands. For example, send a signal to a container to flush logs, change log, velocity, reload configurations, etc. So our new proposal is to add an uh, inline pod definition to send the, the container signals or run commands inside of the container and a new API object to send a request to trigger the signal or comments. An external controller, such as the application snapshot controller, would signal uh, when this API object um, should be created and when um, Kubelet should be running this command inside the container. Um, so Kubelet will be the one that is uh, watching the objects and run the command when it is created and update the status accordingly. This feature is still under design discussions.
And the next one is uh, the volume group and group snapshot. This proposes to introduce a new volume group CRD uh, that groups multiple volumes together and a new group snapshot CRD that supports taking a snapshot of all volumes in that group and ensure right order consistency. We are also looking at how to use the volume group concept to support failure domain spreading. For example, how to place volumes in the same group across different disks on the same storage system. And the next one is the um, object bucket provisioning. Uh, this proposes a object storage Kubernetes API to support orchestration of object store operations for Kubernetes workloads. Therefore, bring in object storage as the first class citizen in Kubernetes, just like file and block storage. It also introduces the container object storage interface, uh, or COSI, as a set of gRPC interfaces for provisioning object stores. It supports uh, the major object store protocols such as S3, Google Cloud Storage, Azure Blob, while being extensible so that we could add uh, other protocols in the future. Uh, it proposes to support both greenfield for new bucket provisioning and brownfield for existing bucket operations. It proposes a several uh, new CRDs, a bucket request CRD, which is a user names based, which represents a request for bucket, and a bucket class uh, is a cluster scoped CRD. Um, it defines the provisioner and also has a set of uh, parameters for creating new buckets. Uh, and the uh, bucket CRD uh, that is also cluster scoped, uh, it's, uh, it refers to a physical bucket in a cloud or on the prem and contains connection information and metadata to communicate with a physical bucket. For this feature, there have been weekly design meetings. It has become a sub-project under Six Storage, and repos have been created under Kubernetes 6 for prototyping purpose. Um, and there are um, also uh, more features that have been working on. Uh, the first one is uh, volume backup. Uh, so the motivation for this feature is that the existing volume snapshot feature was not explicitly designed for backups because there's no explicit definition in that design to have snapshots stored on a different backup device separate from the primary storage. For most cloud providers, a snapshot is actually a backup that is uploaded to an object store in the cloud. However, for most other storage vendors, a snapshot is locally stored alongside the volume on the primary storage. Therefore, it is impossible to design a portable data protection policy that work for all the storage vendors. So the goal of this effort is to come up with a design for volume backups that are different from volume snapshots. But otherwise, the uh, user APIs should be somehow similar. For example, we still need APIs to take a backup of the volume, to provision a volume, and populate that from a backup. Uh, this uh, volume backup feature is still in very early design stage. Uh, the next one is application snapshot backup and restore. Uh, so there's a cap for this. It proposes a Kubernetes stateful application data management API that collectively define the notion of stateful applications. This refers to applications that maintain persistent state and defines how to run, uh, how to run operations on those applications to do snapshot backup and restore. A snapshot of a stable application is defined as a point in time capture of the state of the application, ensuring application consistency. It captures both the application configurations, including Kubernetes resources such as 
SQL sets, services, config maps, secrets, and so on, and persistent data contained within the application through the persistent volumes. And this feature is also still uh, design in progress. And the next one is data protection workflows. Uh, this working group has also started working on a white paper to define data protection workflows. Um, so we are also working on other things. There will be some potential topics that we may discuss in the future. Uh, as shown here, the first one is the diffs between two snapshots. This can be change blocks for block volumes or change files for file volumes. This is just for incremental snapshots or backups. Uh, we actually have not started the discussion on this topic yet. And second one listed here is the data protection policy. This uh, usually refers to uh, how we can set up schedule to do periodic backups and set up a backup retention policy to automatically clean up old backups or set up a topology to specify a backup location. This can also be used to specify an encryption policy for backups. This topic also has not been discussed yet. Uh, so I have talked about what we have been working on and what other potential topics. Uh, the next, I will talk about how to get involved. Um, so if you are interested in getting involved in this working group, take a look of the working group's community page, community page first. It has a lot of information to get you started. Join the bi-weekly meeting on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Previous meetings are recorded and are available on YouTube. Join the mailing list and the Slack channel. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you all for attending the session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, so uh, I think now let's uh, look at the questions. The first question is, um, hold on. the first question is, is the API, is, it, is the application CRD already available? Shantin, do you want to take that? Okay, sure. Uh, yep, I can hear you. Uh, yes, the API CRD is right now in V1 beta 1. So yeah, it is available. Okay. Uh, second question is, does this working group collaborate with uh, like SNEER or specific vendors to benefit of their years of experience? Uh, yeah, so in this working group, I think there is one page that was shown earlier in the presentation there are uh, multiple vendors supporting us. Um, for example, uh, let's see. So I'm trying to see the page. Like some of the traditional sort of vendors like Dell EMC, you know, NetApp, um, there is a IBM. Yeah, so there are actually multiple uh, vendors already supporting us and then they are, they are in this working group. Uh, we are not collaborating with SNEER specifically, um, but I think many of the vendors joining this one group actually uh, work with SNEER. So we can definitely use more of their experience there. Uh, next one. Yeah, I think just on top yeah. of that, uh, we discussed a little bit about storage vendors, uh, but data protection, the concept in Kubernetes is slightly bigger than that. Uh, we do all cooperate and uh, work with uh, firms like Velora, right? We like uh, uh, Caston from the application perspective and the cluster perspective as, as well. Yeah, good point. Yeah, that's it. Okay, good point. Uh, and next question How would you judge the need for Kubernetes building backup restore capabilities versus the 
application itself. Just handling it at a higher level, that was a question that has always been a discussion point for traditional applications. Uh, yeah, so we think that we should still uh, have this capability built into Kubernetes. As you can see that we actually got a lot of uh, support from uh, backup vendors and storage vendors. They would like to have this capability in Kubernetes. There are many missing pieces. So if we can uh, provide those missing pieces, then that would uh, uh, enable the storage, uh, the backup vendors uh, to have a full solution for data protection in Kubernetes. Uh, so in terms of uh, having the application handle its, itself at a high level, I think they could still do that, but we can also, uh, I, we can also integrate those uh, capabilities as part of uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, capabilities. So Shang Chen, you want to add, add anything there? Uh, sure, just to be clear, uh, this question was about, asked by Adrian. So uh, we don't think those two concepts conflict with each other, but rather they work with each other. So uh, when we look into solving the problems in uh, the data protection problems in Kubernetes con con uh, context, one of the things is that w how can we, us as a community, supply essential building blocks to solve applications problem, right? For example, uh, worm snapshot, execution hooks, worm grouping, application level resource grouping, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all fundamental building blocks such that application they themselves can effectively achieve application consistency snapshot or backup. From that perspective, we are not trying to step into the business of taking care of application consistency snapshot, uh, right? but rather provide, try to provide in fundamental building blocks such that the application can do that from their side, uh, from a higher level. Uh, in this sense, I think uh, the end of the day, applications are the ones, application owners are the ones who knows to do uh, the backup and the snapshot, and us as a community are uh, in the place to provide those Building blocks instead of you know taking the position to uh, do application related stuff too much. I hope this answers your question. Thanks, Chen. Uh, next question: How much does the current work on data protection support or tackle solutions like Velara? Uh, so we are basically providing some. Um, tools for Valara to use, right? Like Shanti mentioned that we're working on uh, the, the Quias hooks so they can actually leverage this uh, in Valara. Right now, without this, uh, they will be just directly uh, using the the exact uh, um, sub-resource to, to do this Quias, but with this tool, it will be much easier. Valara is also actually part of this working group. Um, so yeah, so we are not really like solving the, the whole problem, but we are basically trying to provide in some uh, uh, missing tools that they can use. Next question, since there is no chain block tracking snap diffs feature, does this mean that every volume backup will be a full backup and not an incremental backup any timeline for when you might see incremental diffs for? Um, yeah, so this is actually uh, sorry, Shin, our... You want, to, you want to read the, the last piece of the question slightly louder? I, I couldn't hear you. Oh, any timeline for when you might see incremental diff support. Yeah, so basically this is something, the change block tracking, this is something actually brought up by the backup vendor as one missing piece in Kubernetes. Um, we haven't got a chance to tackle this one. So I think right now, um, backup vendors will just uh, have to uh, do this themselves because we don't really have an exp uh, explicit API to do this. Um, but I think this is something that we should be uh, talking about in the future. We haven't really uh, get to this one yet. So right now, if you, if you are uh, doing a 
if you want to do a backup, then uh, it's really depending on the specific backup application, right? So it can um, go automatically check if it's the if the first one is full backup and the second one could be automatically a um, incremental backup. Yeah, so we don't. So right now we don't really have a timeline yet, but this is uh, definitely uh, in our charter. Uh, okay, a little bit we're running out of time. We compare the tools with Vilara. What's the main difference? Oh, as I said before, we are basically just providing uh, some missing pieces in Kubernetes, so Vilara can actually leverage it. Um, any thought on the ability to quest application API to back up? If taking snapshot, the EDCD is not always uh, feasible due to access issues. Yeah, so EDCD, uh, we are not tackling the ETCD itself at this point. Um, but I think that that could be when we look at like uh, back up the whole cluster, then we can look at that piece. But that's already tackled by some other tools. So we are really uh, trying to figure out how to do quiet before taking snapshot. I think that's all the questions I have here. And also, I believe we are running out of time. Thanks, everyone. All right. If you have more questions, we are in the Stack channel.